Good morning. As we begin, I invite you to please stand and turn and face the entryway to the church. Father Tom, and I thank you for your prayers and presence today. And a wonderful way you can show your support to Dana's family is by participating as fully as you can in the prayers of the Mass, especially in the songs that are indicated in the program that you are handed on the way into church. The God that pray as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our God who raised Jesus from the dead be with you always. We gather to remember how in the waters of baptism Dana died with Christ and rose with him to eternal life. May he now share with him eternal glory. We place this white cloth over Dana as a reminder of that day when he put on Jesus Christ in baptism. It's through our faith in the power of Jesus' saving death and resurrection and Dana sharing in that through baptism and a faithful life that we pray that he will now be raised to be with the Lord forever. Now as we begin, I invite you to please join in our opening hymn. 
You'll find it at number 598 in the Maroon Gather hymnal, How Can I Keep From Singing? Number 598. Let us pray. Well, God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Dana, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to keep be afar from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from toil? I have considered the task which God has appointed for us to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to his time 
and has put the timeless into our hearts without ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Please join in our psalm number 23 in the hymnal. from the first letter of John. Beloved, 
Let us love one another because God is of love. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we may have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. seated. Evan and Peg, again, to you, to all the family gathered here, all the friends, our deepest sympathies from the St. Michael's community, particularly when a death is so unexpected, so sudden, too soon, all of those, it's, it's time, a time to be very gentle and let, let things come as, as they may. But um, it was, it was such a privilege to sit with you and, and hear some of those memories of what made your dad a spectacular man. Um, particularly touched me when you, one of the first things you said, you remembered you made your first field trip when you're only a few days old down to the business. And I, I, I don't know if it was that or some combination, certainly some combination of that and your dad's passion for what he did for his work and his love for being with people is this evidenced here today that has made that not only a part of your life but now your work too. Um, so many ways you talked about how whatever, and you'll do, explain this better than I can in your eulogy too, but how he, so many things that he did, uh, he did because it was a part of your life and dedicated himself to, uh, to everything that was, was going on in your life and that made him very much a part of our, our family here. And uh, we uh, 
celebrate the, the many things. I, I think you've picked up a little bit of his fashion, uh, or style fashion, but uh, I don't know if you're going to try rocking the mullet yet, but uh, <laughs> maybe at another time. No, no, no. I like the pictures. Uh, but the, the, the love you shared over the years is, is so evident out there. Um, and something that I believe in a strong way does not end at this time. I know in my time here that he was with us here often. In fact, I'm sure it's a little uncomfortable to be in the front seat because all three of you would normally be about in the second pew from the back, right back there, but he was here. And oftentimes, sometimes I would see him coming in alone. And we never talked much, he and I, never talked much about his faith, about some other things, yes. But we know there is a faith there. And as part of what you remembered about that, how beautiful you remember that this, the second reading we heard from 1 John was one of his favorite passages, that God is love. And what we are about to celebrate in just a few days is that God's love is not a love that depends on us being perfect or never making any mistakes or never sinning, but rather that love is a love that manifested itself when we rejected God's love. He came down to this earth to die for us. And you hear me say, I hope you say often enough on Sunday, he never gives up on us. He never gives up. So that faith that your dad lived in his own way is a faith that we pray now brings him beyond the challenges of this life to a life that awaits all of those who each try to follow him, each in their own way. And we pray that he will continue to delight in all things that happen in your life, all the adventures until, God willing, we are together again with him one day in the kingdom if we follow Jesus faithfully. God bless you. Let's stand now. So we place our prayers this day before our loving God. To each of these prayers, I invite you to please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dana, who was so quickly taken from us, that he may experience the glory of the eternal kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gathered here today to worship with faith in the resurrection, that they may experience God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing sorrow at the death of Dana, that our faith may be our consolation and eternal life our hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body, that they may never feel forsaken by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our family and friends who have died in the hope of rising again, that they may share in the glory of Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in the armed forces and for veterans, that they may be assured of our gratitude for the sacrifices they have made to keep our nation safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family unity and closeness, that it may be strengthened within our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen and love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Dana and all of our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk 
by her side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing with the Sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees? I be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus or in all of you be still will I stand in your presence or to my knees be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when all I will do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. So we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Dana. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of a blessed resurrection has dawned that though saddened by the certainty of dying, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. So with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh. 
invite you to please join in kneeling at this time or to be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Until you come again Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Dana, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen.
That's the Savior's command informed by divine teaching. We dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. We invite those who share our Catholic faith and wish to receive Holy Communion to come forward in two lines down the center aisle and also on the side. This time again, I invite you to please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 847 in the Gather hymnal, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 847.
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to feel, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy brings unending love amazing has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been set earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine Lord God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine take a few moments now to share some memories from Dana's life When you thought you didn't have any more tears to cry, um, kind of pours all out at once. Um, first off, I want to take a moment to recognize the efforts of all who made this day possible. Um, thank you to Father Tom and Father Ryan for being here. Thank you to Angie for working with us closely as well. Um, to Brian and Otilia at Brian, uh, Ballard Sunder, thank you for everything. You guys have been amazing and very gracious, um, and we're very thankful for you guys. I'm thankful to Lauren 
the choir, my uncles John and Bill, um, as well as anybody else I missed. Um, and I want to thank all of you here in attendance today. No matter how well you knew my dad, he would be beyond proud to see you all here. He had immense love for each and every one of you guys, no matter how well you knew him or not. My dad was truly a genuine man. He was my first ever best friend. When I was born, he already had about 14 nicknames for me. One of which, and a few of my buddies will know this one, was Bones, because I was the chubbiest baby he had ever seen at the time. He was the king of nicknames, which I'm sure many of you guys can attest to, and many of you guys said as you came up to see us. He was truly an open book. He wore his heart right on his sleeve. When my parents found out they were pregnant, naturally my dad couldn't resist in revealing his first and only child's gender. My mom didn't want to know initially, but of course my dad spoiled it by saying, vroom vroom. I think eventually she forgave him. When I was about a week old, we took our first field trip together as a family down to New Prague so he could show me off to everybody at work. This was the company he helped build with his mother um, and operate with his mother, Ramona. He had so much pride in knowing I was his new wingman for life. Each fall, he would take me to see the combines out in the field. Every Sunday, without fail, we would watch NASCAR together in the living room and watch the fast cars go rooming by. He treated me as the best thing that ever happened to him because I was. One morning when I was a few years old, he proposed to me a simple, simple offer. If I could use the bathroom all by myself, he would skip work that day and buy me a new dirt bike. Safe to say I did about a thousand laps in the backyard that day. Still don't know how mom felt about that one. My dad was my superhero growing up. He flew through the air on snowmobiles as he raced snowcross for the first few years I was alive and a little bit before. When I was old enough, he made sure I got to race my ZR120 at Canterbury as well with the other kids. I think I placed 11th out of 12th. Um, we blamed the sled. Ultimately, he came to realize what was truly meaningful in life and gave up such a passion of his to focus solely on his new family and the business he was running. As I grew older, my dad got involved in every sport I played. He coached baseball, football, and hockey, and even taught me the fundamentals of golf, a game I love today and will forever love. His love for me resonated with those that were near to us. On Sunday mornings in the wintertime, we would wake up early for hockey practice, and I would hear my dad downstairs in the kitchen doing the dishes and singing his favorite tunes. He called this Sunday morning singing. I wish I appreciated those songs more at the time. When I was 18 months old, my mom and dad found out that I was allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, and other, uh, a variety of other foods. I was given an EpiPen for my allergies, but luckily, to this day, I haven't had to use it. In August of 2008, I was upstairs playing and just being a normal boy when I heard a cry for help that I will never forget. I raced down the stairs to find out that my dad had been stung by a bee outside while he was working. Us three hopped in the car and raced off to the hospital, running every red light in town. Ultimately, my dad used a few of my EpiPens and it helped save his life. I will never forget the look on my dad's face as he didn't know if things were going to be okay or not. But by the grace of God, he made it to the hospital in an ambulance and survived the sting. Just a day after being released from the hospital, my dad was at the next football practice, ready to coach and be there for me and my teammates. This was a testament to how much he cared for me and would do whatever it took for everybody around him that he cared about. He was there for all of my triumphs and failures, and I was there for his. In January of 2006, he was presented with the Sally B. Wheeler Distinguished Service Award by the United Professional Horsemen's Association for his contribution to the show horse industry. This was among his proudest achievements, and this really solidified him in the show horse world. My dad built his brand alongside some of his lifelong friends, 
including Paul Lambrecht, Phil Werner, Keith Rinda, Cliff Johannes, Eric Doles, Eric Johnson, Carol Antinger, Kim Schambauer, Lynette Bezik, Maria Halloran, Linda Shadrick, Deanna Davis, and Robin Sibbett, as well as many, many others that I'm sure I forgot to mention. Today, I get the opportunity to work with many of these folks, and I consider them all my family. My dad took me with him when he branched off from Radon and began Appointments USA as its own entity. At the time, I was a bit salty that I was spending my sophomore year spring break building tables and painting walls in the new shop. But now I would do anything to go back and relive those memories again. In November of 2021, I was working a remote finance job for 3M, the company that hired me right out of school. I felt unfulfilled and wanted a greater challenge, but I didn't know what that challenge was initially. I woke up one morning and knew what I needed to do, and that was to be there for my dad and step back into the family business once again. It is the greatest honor and responsibility of my life to uphold and continue his legacy at Appointments USA, and I promise to never let him down. Dad, I know you are looking down on us today, and I know how happy this day would have made you feel. I just want you to know how proud I am to be your son and how much I love you. Thank you, Evan. Again, a word of thanks to all of you for being here today. You are welcome to continue with us. Uh, immediately after the, the funeral mass, we'll be going to St. Michael's Cemetery just a short distance away for burial, or you can simply remain here. There'll be a luncheon served on the lower level of the church in Archangel's Hall. For anyone who isn't familiar with the church, there's an elevator in the entryway back over here, or there are stairs back at, at, in this corner of the church, too. We simply ask for directions down there, and I'm certain some of you may need to get back to work or get back to your preparations for Christmas, so the family encourages you if you need to ha have lunch right away, you, you certainly can do that, not wait for us to be back from the cemetery. Now let's stand and conclude our prayer. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of a loving Father, friend. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of God conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Dana in the sure and certain hope. Together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now in peace we take Dana to his place of rest. Let us sing number 758 in the Gather Hymnal, Soon and Very Soon. Number 758. 